Tilo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the lives, previous lives, or be ready for future lives. The username is at the bottom of the screen. And don't forget, we also got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. Um, let's get into it, man. This is um, Raw Blues, Episode 1, London Metropolitan Police. This is an old school one. None of that new stuff, man. Not yet, at least. Talk to me, though. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Please, mate. Leave me alone. Just let us know. London, 4 a.m. The police have been called to a stabbing, but the victim won't let them touch him. I've got one in the neck. I've got one under the lower rib cage on my right hand side. Do not touch me. Calls on it. Suspect the male has been injured. Take off the cuffs and I'll do you as well. The Metropolitan Police Service receives over 6,000 emergency calls a day. But in recent This is not the police interceptors anymore. This is this is the eighties in London. Years they faced a barrage of criticism. Now it seems to be a job few people want. They were tackling people, but I don't want your help. Well an ambulance is gonna come and it's gonna to want to see you, you nailed against the wall. So who is joining? And how is the Met going to produce a new breed of officer to police? Oh, this is the intro. Music. Music from the intro block. Nobody can get away from the amount of criticism we've had over the last two or three years. The inquiry into the death of Stephen Lawrence, allegations of corruption, allegations of sexism, racism, incompetence. We need to address that. Commander Richard Cullen is in charge of the Metropolitan Police Training School in Hendon, North London. It's up to him to try to change the way the Met trains its police officers. Yeah, how did that go? 1999. Today, a new intake of recruits is arriving to begin the four-month training course. In the last couple of weeks, I've had a few doubts whether I'm actually going to be able to do it, whether I'm actually going to be able to pass. Man, listen, <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. The UK looks eerily similar to, to, to America up until a certain point. Like, it stopped looking like America up at, like, 2000. That's when, like, stuff started separating. Um, I'm just sort of doubting my own ability, really. Um, but now I'm actually here. I do feel, I just feel a hell of a lot more confident, and I'm raring to go now. Wow. It's a lot bigger than I expected. If 24-year-old Claire Keating makes it through the course, in just 18 weeks' time, she'll be policing the streets of London. That's all it takes, huh? Don't worry about it, all right? Phone <laughs> out, Emma. I'll be fine. Okay. You're all right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks for bringing me. Where's your they suitcase? Where's your 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 will be one of Claire's instructors. Welcome, Sam. You're in the A class. OK. Good evening. Welcome, Sergeant Bergen. Hello. How are you? You are? Sam Wickingdon. Can you uh, lose the earrings when yeah. you come down? We are a professional service, and first impressions do count. You go in there and then put the table. To maintain their current numbers, the Met needs 180 new recruits every five weeks. <laughs> every five weeks? You need 180? You need 180 volunteers 
every five weeks in the 1990s. I'm Claire Keaton. Claire. Yeah. Today, only 93 are joining. That's, you know, that's what I had assumed. Okay. Okay. They was not beating them numbers. Really nervous though. Oh, yeah. No, you don't need to be nervous. <laughs> don't need to worry again. about. The Met draws its recruits from all over the country. Until last week, 23-year-old Craig Jones was working at a leisure centre in Manchester. I'm proud to have got this far. It's a big achievement. My parents are really proud. And now I am here. It's all sinking in and you can forget home. And yeah, it's back in the day where you ain't had to do much to be a cop. I feel like in Chicago now you needed like a <laughs> two years of college, you need a degree, you need all types of way, because this is gonna be my new home now for the next six months, so it's time to get on with things. When they turn up, not smart. Straight away that puts my back up. Um, we've had one that has come in. Um, I've taken probably wrongly a dislike. I've um, because he came in, he was chewing gum, he was unshaven, he was wearing a jean jacket, uh, he had trainers on that were undone. Not the sort of um, thing that you would expect of a, a person starting a new job for the Metropolitan Police. When I've got here, I've already had my first telling off. It's like I'm not being suited up and chewing gum. So it's like I explained, this. I've just travelled halfway across the country. But you get over these things, don't you? Move on. They, they don't care. He's pretending to care, but only 93 people showed up. So you're still there. They ain't send you home. It's me. I want to stay me. A lot of people have said to me before I came, you're going to change. Next thing you'll have a crew cut and clean shaven. And I said, if, if you've got to do, you've got to do. But at the end of the day, I want to be playing old me the way everyone loves me. Hope. Yeah, man, you... you... I, I want to take I want to take a leap of faith and call you delusional. It's not going to be the same you anymore. Commander Richard Cullen has been in charge at Hendon for two years. I was sent here by the commissioner to sort out training in the Metropolitan Police. For some time, it had been seen as as failing the organisation. We actually need super cops. The Metropolitan Police demands the best. One incompetent, one inept police officer does more damage on the streets of London than anything else. There is no room here for anybody who's a racist, who's sexist, who's homophobic, or who's a bully. I mean, I guess you've got to say it, right? <laughs> If any of those apply to you, best thing for you to do now is go over to your rooms, pack your bags, and walk out through the main gates. To actually say, I don't accept the stereotyping of Metropolitan Police Officers, and to join the police service at this moment of time, takes a massive uh, amount of faith. To be a police officer, you've got to really want to be a police officer. Facts. You've got to almost have it in your blood, if you like. I know there's not... I can't change people's image on my own, but if I can change just one person's image of the police, then I'll be really happy. Johnny Bravo loves it. Thanks very much, guys. Huh? The natural. Chemistry graduate Mike Walsh is from Lancashire. But never mind. I think my generation, we, we just we don't have the bigotry that generations before had. I don't think we do. I think it's getting less and less. Yeah. That's what she just asked yeah. me. Yeah. Your parents put you through that much school. You're, you are a chemistry graduate. And, and you chose this? Yeah, and I'm just saying. Willingly? It's very unfortunate that you do get one or two situations that are blown out of proportion by the press. But I believe it's up to somebody like myself to go out there and say, well, actually, you know, not everyone's like that. I'm actually not a bad lad, you know. I don't have beliefs like that. I'm, I'm here to work for you, so, um, you know, take me as I am. The Home Office say that within 10 years, the Met must be recruiting 30% of its officers from ethnic minorities. 
In this intake, they've only managed to recruit 7%. Joining has been a big step for Harinda Bobra. Anybody coming from an Asian background will know every mother and father wants their son either to be a doctor, a lawyer, a solicitor. The last thing they want their son or daughter to be is a police officer. Well, it's funny, my friend Ryan told me that too, verbatim. Reason only being because of the. I mean, he's a doctor now. <laughs> oh man, I knew he was gonna be a doctor. He used to think he could hoop. He wasn't bad, but you know what I'm saying. But you know. the, the, the vast dangers that are exposed to this job, and the racial abuse that they would come across. But I was once to join the police. It's an excellent job, and it's one of the best jobs I think to person to be in. You've got to be strong, you know. And if you can take that sort of. You know, if someone came up to me and said, you know, blah blah blah, whatever about my colour, to me, to me personally, it, it just won't, it just won't, it just won't bother me. They too. It's an early start for the new recruits. Breakfast is at six forty-five, but not all of them have made it to the canteen. So somebody sleeps still. Been a rough night. Woke up about half two, then again at half three. Started looking at uh, me statement of common purpose and values that's what they say you have to know so a shower um what time is it now no i'll be too late if i have a shower two of craig's instructors are pcs george marshall and steve savile all right okay Class. okay right sit yourselves down craig can you uh, sit At least he made it here on time. What am I speaking to you? Any ideas? What did I say? It was all lined up outside the wall yesterday, outside the staff room. What did I say about shaving? He has to be clean shaven. Clean shaven? What is that? I was under the impression if you were growing something, you were... No, what I said was, you can't have stubble. You either clean shave or full beard. OK? Right. They need to fit into the organisation. So you got to already come with a full beard. You can't be in the growing stages. You got to be there already. And to do the things that we want them to. They need to think differently about things. Because you can't stand and look and walk away. You have to be the people, if a bomb's gone off, that's running towards the bomb while everybody else is running away. So... Ah! Uh. It's... I'm gonna be so real with you, it's hard for me to believe that he would do that, him personally. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and to me, it starts at the top and trickles down. And if I can believe that you, at some point, had that mindset that you just described, then I'm all in. But I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you was to come and sit in front of me and tell me that, I would look at you like you was crazy, brother. Like, yeah, you ain't doing that. running towards the bomb while everybody else is running away. So they're gonna change massively. You will get this amount of work over the next 18 weeks. You will collect them on a weekly basis. And that is what you've got to learn over the next 18 weeks. Yeah. You're looking forward to that, aren't you? Yeah. Even when I've seen it six times now, I still find it hard to believe that they actually get through all that. Still, we have to know it. <laughs> Nightmare. What's up, Crypto? OK, the, what we're going to do now is introductions. We're all... We don't know each other. You know us X amount. We're now going to introduce ourselves. You're all going to squirm, perhaps. You're now centre of attention, and as a police officer, you will be the centre of attention. Morning all. My name's Craig Jones, as well as it sounds, Manchester born and bred. <laughs> <laughs> went to school, then went to college, done really well. When I was 16, I was arrested by the police for underage driving. I was so frightened of police at, at the 16? time. I thought they were all evil people. You had to be a certain sort of person to join the police room, get out and conquer the world, that sort of attitude. At 16, she was arrested for underage driving? I don't even, I'm lost. So I thought at 16, you were an adult in the UK. When did the rules change? There had to be some type of changing of the rule. When they arrested me, they took me to the police station. They almost, 
it always made the experience quite enjoyable for me, <laughs> which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but, but that experience really made my mind up for me to join the place. You've asked too many questions yeah, so okay. far, come on, come on. <laughs> How did you cope with things like... So wait, you can learn to drive at 16? And you can drive at 17, but at the age of 16, you're a consenting adult in multiple situations in the UK. All right. But you can't drive. Sort of death and abuse. That's, that's and a little weird. RTAs and things like that. I mean, as a, you know, I'm just thinking about myself, you know, and... In four months, I might be out on the street seeing stuff like that. I mean, how did you cope with it when you first started? You become very hard to it very quickly. After a few years, you will not be the same people that you are. For instance, Saturday and Friday nights at the moment may mean to you weekends off, go out with your mates, have a few beers, and let's enjoy ourselves. Friday and Saturday nights to me now mean alcohol, prisoners in a cell, blood and fighting and vomit. That's what it means to me because I've been doing this for so long. This is perhaps what I think I've been I've been quite lucky um, in my upbringing. Um, I've had a good education. I went to a good school. I went around the world for a couple of years, um, and I think I've learned a fair bit in that time that I was travelling about myself and about people. Um, and it's it's a very good way. It's a good career in that you can I'll be able to give something back of the things that I've learned and the things that I've experienced. Yeah, it's a very strong personality, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a shame through all, really. I was particularly impressed with uh, Michael, the guy with the tan who's been to Egypt. So he was quite confident, which is good, but we shall see. Hopefully he will be very confident and will be able to do it, but uh, it's unusual to have someone so confident. I've got reservations about, about Michael, I must admit. I have reservations about Michael, too. I don't feel like... I, I feel like he's been sheltered from the real world. And this is going to be an eye opener. And his first eye opener is going to be him in London in a position of power. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. He's overconfident. It's all fresh in our mind now, isn't it? I've seen lots of people fail the course. University graduates are no exception. Stereotyping is an important issue for the Met and one of the recruits' first lessons is on this topic. The class has been given six different cars to examine, and they have to try and work out the type of person who owns each car. Oh, this is an amazing exercise to see who is, you know what I'm saying? in the wine club so many times so it's not really oh wait i missed it go back salute to crypto for the dono appreciate you as always on mirror all right we'll go for the mail yeah but i tried this oh wait no go back go back go back go back he's in the wine club so many times so not Go really all the way to the start. Right. When they've been abroad. Yeah. Where did Different this... cars to oh, examine, okay. and they have to try and work out the type of person who owns each car. It's going to be a youngish lad, isn't it? When they've been abroad. Yeah. Travel. You've got, you got a box. you got a box of wine. He's in the wine club so many times, so it's not reading the sun or mirror. Is it? Right, we'll go for the mail. Yeah, but I tried this. But it's, it's the thing, he's got a box of wine, he's got a yeah, box of car goodies. Stereotypically, a woman wouldn't carry that, would she? I don't know. You don't see many guys carrying umbrellas either, do you? Well, he's been to the races, hasn't he? You can tell. You've been a bit I'm egotistic. This is definitely a woman's car. First and foremost. <laughs> We're looking at the goods, aren't we? You've got a good taste in paper and wine. What age, Drek? Yeah, it's an older person. Yeah, older definitely. Yeah, 30 yeah. plus. Yeah. Mother and son tag team <laughs> unit. The class draw some interesting conclusions about a silver metro. And all cars are sporting at times. Show me about it. We thought it was a female that, female. Dro that drove the car in because the seat was so far up, so like closer to the steering wheel. That's a good attention to detail. Young. Somebody young? Someone below 25. Under 25? Oh, right. Clean. 
Yeah. Um, and a and a nodding dog we saw in the uh, yeah. on the back nodding parcel shelf. Dog. Interesting to know actually. That's a young couple under twenty five catering female youngish like that. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's yes, it is. It's his? When, I, when I left my old division at Chingford, where I used to work, they bought me a, a leaving present, and one of it was a nodding dog. Oh. When we're in class early on, early days, <laughs> we are looking constantly around the class. Thank you for that. Dude. I think we can tell quite quickly whether or not someone has come to Hendon and has put a mask up. For instance, racism, whether they're homophobic, things like that. If you just did lessons on, say, drink driving or criminal damage, some of the basic stuff we do, uh, you could hide behind a mask. With these other lessons we do, it's very, very difficult to hide behind that mask all the time. Day three. OK, he finally shaved. He's finally getting on board. I wanted to come and be the same person. Obviously, you're going to have to change in certain ways. But I didn't think I'd have to change, like, physically in appearance. I thought I always looked quite smart. But rules are rules, so... Off it's had to go. Today is a big day. The recruits are going to try on their police uniforms for the first time. This is what it's all about. Change room number one, please, quick okay. as you can. Shout out Crypto right. for the gift itself. It's a flood like that. I just can't believe I got it finally. It seems to have taken forever. I actually feel like a police officer now. Yeah. 41 gift itself. It's quite subs. masculine though, the uniform. Oh, crazy. It's a bit of a shame, but never mind. God, I'll put this lad on. It sort of bestows a sense of... Well, they look like rookies. <laughs> ...responsibility on you straight away, just looking... They still got this hat in 2024? You know, you're looking at a, you're looking at a police officer. I don't know, it's sort This of... is from 1999. You put the gear on, I'm no longer just Mike Walsh. It's like, you know, a Mike Walsh a police officer. It's a bit different, really. Yeah, I'm going to have to get used to it. Right. I'm going to tell you all about the Metfest in one go, and then I'm going to fit you individually. As soon as you're fitted, get straight into your own clothes. This is the Metfest. It's anti-stab and it's ballistic, OK? Up to exactly what it says here, OK? If it is loose on you and you get shot or stabbed, it won't work as efficiently. It has to lie next to you. They ignore the fact that you've got boobs. It has to lie next to you. Your stomach is here. If you get shot here, this is the slowest, most painful way to die. All right, you will die because there's not this little piece of metal in you because your, ex your entry hole's that big, yeah? The exit hole's this big, and that's what you want to stop. Ma'am, slow down. <laughs> the exit hole is not that big. From a, did she say from a nine millimeter? It's not that big. She, she just said this big, it's not that big. Did she get hit with a 50 cal? Like, no. This is why you wear it close to you. It's not, you know, this is for real girls. When there are people out there that want to get you, this is for your own benefit. You must wear this piece of kit. Is this something you wear every day on just general duty, or would this be if we're going somewhere to arrive? I advise you to get or... used to wearing it all of the time. Some police stations, because they've had about eight murders, you're not allowed to leave the nick unless you've got it on. Damn. OK, how are you feeling? That's really, um, all right, yeah. Scary. Yeah, it brings it all to life, I think. It brings it all to reality. But it takes a lot more than a new uniform to impress Sergeant Bergham. This afternoon, I came into this room and it was in a state of disarray. There was books, pens and everything thrown out all over. I don't think he lads army. You do? Come on now. The place. Now, you've been spoken to by staff about classroom tidiness. Maybe a small point to you, but it isn't to me. I am full standards and I ensure that those standards are met. So when I walk round, have you shaved today? Uh, no, st no, sir. Why? Um, there was no warm water this morning. Rubbish. Use cold water. Cold water. This is what I'm talking about. No warm water. What's wrong with cold water, then? Uh, no, st no, sir. Why? Um, there was no warm water this morning. Rubbish. 
I cycled in and I showered in cold water. Tomorrow morning, you'll be outside my door right after parade and I will inspect you, OK? Sorry. If I have occasion to come in here and speak about... Where have you been? Sorry, we didn't realise we had to be back at quarter to two. Right, you're on early turn tomorrow morning, both of you. Right. Can you ensure that that uh, name's taken? Thanks. You haven't got your mums and dads to wipe your noses now. You've got to stand on your own two feet and ensure that you get the jobs done. Do I make myself clear? Right. And that's the thing, him sitting there like this, it dimed you out. You told on yourself. You was better off just sitting there like this. Maybe your story would have been more believable. You actively trying to cover your face like, brother. Okay, yeah. Have a word, sir. Be so that's what we've been doing. So you crying? Stop bleeding a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Come look at you. The, the, I mean, how could you? How could you possibly, after all you've been through, not shave this morning? It's like, what were you thinking of? Oh, too, oh, get away with it. Do you think you want to sit there all day like that? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you come and get my kettle like Craig did? Yeah, they'd be mad at me. They want you to shave every day. Ain't no way, buddy. He's not as green as he looks, cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was about to go to the Navy, like um, uh, I had I was I had a doctor's note and everything. I'm not shaving. Not not every day. I, every two weeks, cool. Every week, once a week, maybe, cool. But not every day. I wasn't doing it. And it was cool as long as you had a doctor's note. Being on early turn means the recruits will have to get up an hour earlier. But that's the least of their problems. Every Friday, they'll have to sit a written exam. Tomorrow is their first. Hi. How are you? I was going to go to the Navy. I didn't go. <laughs> I was like one step away, but I, I got red flagged. Because I got kicked out of high school. I had to go to an alternative school for three months of high school. For the last three months. And because of that, I couldn't go to the Navy. I could have went to the Army, but not the Navy. And no thank you. I got into trouble today. <laughs> I've got to do an early turn. I've got to be inspected at 7 o'clock in the morning. The last thing I want is to fail my first exam. So I'm determined not to. But it's, it seems to be going OK. I mean, I've done about 70 pages in the last half an hour. They're going to be tested on an information pack that was sent out to them with their joining papers. Harinder's finding it hard going. Sunday, I didn't get any sleep. Monday night, I didn't get any sleep. Tuesday night, I maybe got an hour. And then last night, I got a couple of, a couple of hours. The last time I sat exam was a good four and a half, five years ago. Um, normally, I'm, I'm good at sort of like putting information together, but it's just a matter of making it stick up there. Not me. If I read something, normally if I read something and write it, it's there. <laughs> but I gotta read it and write it. I can. If I just write it, <laughs> it's not gonna be there. If I just read it, it can possibly be there. But if I read it and write it, oh, it's there. All it takes is one time to read it and write it if I want to remember it. The Maybe following two. morning, before the exam, the three recruits on early turn report for inspection by drill instructor Peter Clements. Shan! Think what you're doing. See you watch. Yes, sir. What are you here for? Uh, not shaving, sir. Mm -hmm. I think discipline is very important, and all the, all the rules, however insignificant they might seem, which, yeah, OK, might, I, I probably think some of them are quite pointless, but that doesn't matter. They could tell us to... Uh, have green hair every day of the week. It wouldn't matter what they were telling us to do. It's the fact that they're telling us to do something and you've got to be able to follow orders. Mike's commitment is soon put to the test. Once the exam's finished, the class have their first lesson in drill. It's Peter Clement's job to make sure they're up to scratch why are they doing military marching drills in, in, in a full suit? 
I've at least put you on your police uniform, right? Am I bugging? For their passing out parade. When the students pass out from here on Friday week 18, they'll probably never ever march again in their entire life. Thanks. But they can go away with some great satisfaction of what they have achieved. And help check button. Wait for the word of command, okay? No impersonations of Skippy. <laughs> I was trying, and then he, he said that I wasn't up to scratch, so I don't... It would have been useful if he could at least have said what I was doing wrong, because I haven't got a bloody clue now. It's my hair, probably, yeah. I think it's a shirt. Anything else? <laughs> you know, well, I don't think I'll be marching around the streets of London, but if I can get the cost work done and the contact, pass me keys, to me, that's, that's the main thing of walking out of here. Later the same day, the exam results are back. Oh, my God. How many people we think failed? I'm going at least three, three or four. It's 93 people here, but we're only in their little section. Okay, maybe two. Seven? Seven is crazy. <laughs> you ain't got no faith in them. It's tough. I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to go like two. I see four. I see seven. Two. You gotta wait six months to reapply? Six? Okay. Right. 80% plus. Wait, they. they, they go, bro. go back. Later the same day. They the saying it in front of everybody? You see, Bob Rock, 80% plus. You see, Davies, 94%. The pass mark is 70%. 80% plus. You see, Keating, 75%. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You see, Walsh, 100%. Well done. Of course you pass. You're a, chem you, a chemist major. <laughs> a lot of people would say, oh, that's brilliant. He's got 100%. Yeah, I wouldn't take that away from him. He's got 100%. But you're talking about they've had possibly two or three months to, to study this material. He hating. That's a hater for you. Just take it at face value. It's 100%. Nobody else did it. <laughs> Now they're going to get into a situation where they'll only have a week to study the material. You're right, mate. You're right. Right. <laughs> it's not always the people that get 100% that are going to turn out the best recruits. You're right, mate. You're right. Right. <laughs> it's not always the people that get 100% that are going to turn out the best recruits. Sure. Thanks very much, guys. Recruits have to learn to conform to the Met standards. But as one of a new breed, these recruits must also be prepared to challenge the behaviour of fellow officers. I'm going to set up an exercise where I'm going to send one of the class down to do some photocopying. Volunteer, excellent. Could you go down and take five copies of that? And while that person is away at the photocopy, I will brief the class. When she comes back, I'm going to give you a scenario and I'm going to pick on Jackie to give her views to me. Can all of you do it naturally, go against what she says? And at the end of the little discussion we're going to have, I'll then ask her what she thinks. Now, I've run this lesson before, and only one person has ever stuck to their guns. Thank you. Oh, they're trying to see if she holds to her strong, to her beliefs, or if she folds, doesn't stand ten toes, and goes with the crowd. Hmm. Okay. Talk to me. Oh, that's all right. Right, Jackie. There was a complaint that went in by someone who works with the cars. They call them garage hands. And they walked past the gents' locker room, which was on the same floor, came in and made a complaint that he could see topless women on the inside of this male PC's locker. Jackie, if the complaint was made, what do you think should be done about it? Um. Probably ask not to put it on anymore or to remove uh, the pictures that are already on there. So that would offend you if you saw it? Yeah, I think so. You think so? OK. Mike? Nobody's forcing you to look at it as his own property, so if you don't like it, then look the other way. It's not a problem. And after the making, making the complaint, I think it's ridiculous, to be honest. If the guy wants to have a few dirty pictures, then let him have some pictures, you know? Sounds a bit petty to try and you know, get someone to take it off. I mean, they obviously put it there because they wanted it now. You think that's all right? Yeah. I think you kind of expect it if um, guys look as said it, so I can't see what the problem is. It's a male looker room, so why the hell are they looking in there in the first place? 
Okay, so we think it's petty. Yeah. So this person actually moan about it, yeah? Jackie, what do you reckon? I think that if it causes offence to even just... Actually, personally, I don't think it really offends me. That's probably right. wrong what I said to start it. Would you still stick to your guns or would you change it slightly or...? Um, stick to your guns? <laughs> yeah, probably I'd say it's OK, yeah. It's OK. God damn it, Jackie. If it offends you personally, then just roll with that. If it offends you, it offends you. You, you got to stand on your beliefs, man. And that's the problem with a lot of people. This is a good exercise. This is a great exercise. I ain't even going to hold you. If I'm ever in a position where I could do this exercise, I'm doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Right. What actually happened there, Jackie? is I told everybody to disagree with you. <laughs> did you. Did you start to feel that? Yeah. <laughs> but if it was something more serious, how would you feel? What happens the day you're out with your colleague and you stop the police officer off duty who's been drink driving and the colleague you're with, he or she, decides that, no, we want to let this person go. Really good officer, been in 25 years. You're now at the side of the road arguing with your colleague. So what are you going to do? It's not going to be easy. At all, because it's, it's going to be a police officer. Yeah, let's cut the cap. <laughs> they let them go. Um, you peer pressure again. They're saying no, no, we're not going to do it. It's, it's going to be immensely difficult, but you've got to. In my opinion, that police officer isn't a good police officer if they're drinking and driving. It's no matter what else they've done. He's done a thousand. The job, the, the service itself, will back them up 100% if they have a complaint. The difficulty will be alienating themselves and making them not very popular. Must adhere to. And the longer the short of it is, if you do not challenge inappropriate behaviour when you encounter it, your job could ultimately be on the line. Hey, do food different. It's the end of their second week, and this morning, for the first time, the class are allowed to parade in uniform. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Took them two weeks to be able to do this. Okay. Feel good today. 100%. Let's give it some. <laughs> Each of these recruits, when they go on the streets of London, is going to have a massive individual responsibility. We're not training people to work in a supermarket. We're training people who are going to have to make life decisions. They're going to have far more power than the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the Army, the Air Force and the Navy in peacetime. They have a responsibility which no other person in society has. And that is a heavy weight on any young person's shoulder. They say the first two weeks are the easiest, and when it gets onto the third week of the work, it's harder. I wonder if Lisa had to do this. Probably, right? I think they're, they're breaking us in gently at the moment. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm so pleased I'm here now. But I'm so pleased that I finally did it. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them, man. Tell Lily to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.